Uh, Joe and I never actually got to be our close friends because we were always working all the time. So when we did meet up with each other, it was generally a very nice liquid night. <laughs> and uh, uh, we enjoyed each other's company quite a lot. Uh, and, yeah, I think the, the last time I saw John, we used to go to a club in London called the Speakeasy, which was a nice, a nice late night bar. And uh, I'd driven there in my car and I realised it was going to be a really good night. So I drove the car home again and got a taxi in. Just being Mr. Sensible. Very responsible, Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anyway, the bar shut at 3 o'clock in the morning and John was still, still in Goma and he still wanted to fight his own. So he said, come on, we're going to see some friends who are rehearsing in the country. So we're, we're having a, don't worry about it. We, we go outside and outside he has this lovely Aston Martin car. And he's very, very drunk at this stage. I said, don't worry, we'll be fine, we'll be fine. So he gets in the car. And coming out of London, there's a little bit of motorway, uh, autobahn, where the speed limit is 60 kilometers. We were doing 200. <laughs> For the whole way. Uh, and like typical with John, we didn't see one police car, we had no problems. But the road, which was three lanes wide, was only just wide enough for John to drive this car. <laughs> And then, God bless him, that was the last time I saw him, but uh, when, he, when he said he lived his life to the full, he really meant it. But the most important thing about what John did was what we still listen to today. He had a, a way of simplifying everything that was needed in the piece of music he was playing to get the maximum effect, effect in the drums he was playing. Not only did he do that, he did it with an amazing sound. Nobody's drums sounded like John's drums, and nobody's drums sound like that today. <laughs> <laughs>